Hello there everybody and welcome. This is going to be the third session of our Pioneer gameplay. Today we are going to get towards victory. Seriously, we're going to get a little bit further down the road. We're going to introduce trading today and I am going to go over the advanced buildings that we need here, the carpenter and the weaver. I'm gonna get started with Weaver for today because this will revolutionize our efficiency. As currently we are producing fabric with a horrible rate and with that building, it's gonna be better. Since this does matter for me, I'm going to disable the fabric production altogether in this building. And when you go over here, you can now, and you need to sadly, kick out the materials that are no longer needed. I don't know if this got fixed by now, but all the time I played against the storm, these items were lying around forever in there. Maybe it, it has been fixed and I didn't read the patch notes. Let me know in the comments if this is a thing of the past. Anyways, we are going to produce a couple of planks now for that building, and henceforth all of our fabric will be produced in the new building, so that check mark will never go on again. But we are still suffering from a food situation or a food crisis we could even call it as our income is not really good enough for our expenses so we're gonna get started and the trappers camp will be manned to pick those eggs but here we have again a specialization bonus of meat and our lizards they are good with meat so we're going to utilize now ah, not this another trick and we hold down left control and now we're looking for the lizards. So the lizards are working currently at the harvester's camp. We can safely put two humans in there. They won't be doing any different job than the lizards. And another thing catched my eye. There is a lizard sitting in the crude workstation. We changed that too. So these lizards go into the trapper's camp. They now have a chance to yield doubly the amount, the amount, double the amount, and that is really, really worth it. Wherever you can put in specialists, because you have the population, you should really do so. It's so much of a uh, increase of performance. And the other thing that we can do inside of the ancient hearth is a special bonus. The person that is working there is applying a bonus to your city in accordance to your uh, to the species that you put in there. One of my personal non plus ultra things to go is the lizard fire uh, firekeeper, as the lizard firekeeper increases everybody's resolve by one, and as an added bonus, it's a warmth workplace. And guess what? Lizards feel pretty happy in warm workplaces. So we did put up a lot of things here. And let's continue with our gameplay, shall we? So these little optimizations are really important from time to time. We're putting up a trade post and these fields here in between. But as you see here, we already, well, ah, here we got our workers back from that point. I really wanted to say that we're already out of workers again. But now nah, the people working on the event have joined our workforce again. So this quest here with a Beavis Resolve we could finish that by just favoring the beavers for a while, but since it has a 60 second cooldown, we could use it. Yeah, well, whatever. We're, we're going to use that for, uh, for the time being. Because we need to have it 30 seconds online, and after that, it's gonna be finished. So, I'm just gonna be finishing that quest, and then we're good. Oh, on another. Uh, Note, I'm going to employ a second person into the group workstation as this building here is not only inefficient, it is also darn slow. So the, you really get the worst out of all worlds with a group workstation, so don't cling on it longer than you need to. All right, so this quest is done. We're going to uh, release the resolve thingy here. And here you see the number turns blue. If I would be favoring the lizards now, they would be even happier. So happy that they will yield us reputation for that. This is one victory mechanic that you can use in this game. And will use quite a lot. Alright, so I'm building up my road network a little bit here. I cannot fulfill a large encampment in uh, 
event right now. It's, uh, yes, I have the food, but no, I can't give away the food. That's the end of the story. Okay, so as a matter of fact, these two extra people would be extremely helpful right now, so we pick them up. This also brings us to the problem that usually, oh, we had enough houses, we might get a homelessness problem. Also, the hostility has increased by one, because more people, more hostility. Mind you that every level of hostility is also a pressure on the global resolve, not only during the storm season, but also during the regular season. So we get a lot more hostility due to that. But the, the plus side is also that there is no downsides until we hit the next 100 point threshold. It's not gonna be happening anything. Anyways, I'm going to open up the area here so we have more space to work here and as you see there the weaver's workshop has finally the necessary materials we put that thing on priority now because it's important i also want to showcase here fabric is being produced in 21 seconds while being produced here in 42 seconds so efficiency also influences the speed so much reason not to use low efficiency things now our stonecutter's work camp can now be plucked right next to the sea marrow deposit. Sea marrow is okay, but it ain't, it, it hardly is much more than that. All right, we got a new blueprint. Let's see what it offers. We get a selection of blueprints that is a little bit <laughs> problematic, sort of. The small farm, well, we already have one agricultural building it wouldn't get us that far. Instead, I am glancing at the foragers camp. We got here notes that we cannot pick up and we have a imminent problem with food. Normally, I really say that these uh, camps should be taken with caution as they block you from processing buildings. But sometimes if you just happen to have a uh, large occurrence of that stuff it's just sometimes just the way to go against the storm doesn't really follow any strict and uh, hard written rules this is one of the things that makes this game particularly hard as there is no foolproof way because the game will always give you so many different options that you have to find your way yourself and that's what i'm trying to do with this tutorial series as good as i can now we got the carpenter down at uh, the weaver. The weaver here has a specialization bonus for tailors. We don't have any tailors in here yet again. I'm turning these off. And at this workshop, I increase the fabric stockpile max to 40. As I feel as if this is totally okay to have a large stockpile of that, as this is the most efficient way of processing plant fiber into fabric in the game. All right. We're also unlocking the trader's post now. That's good. We still got a couple of quests. Let's check out what new quests we could take here. Well, the need for a jerky quest, I'm not down with that. We're going to go for pottery and wine. The thing here is this quest can be fulfilled just by, uh, by a trader alone, as we just need to buy these goods at a trader and we can fulfill the quests. I personally find that an extremely easy way to get another reputation point. And also the packs of building materials that we require are also fetchable here at the makeshift post. Again, super low efficiency, I warned you, but well, it is good enough. We find sometimes copper ore in or clay and that's totally that's totally fine. I'm going to use copper ore and fabric for this purpose, and we're going to put the limit on four. And fabric will be available in large amounts, and copper ore we won't be processing in the, in the meantime. Okay, my good friends, hello, this is Zork. When we meet him the first time, we can sell any packs of provisions, as these are only needed for a feature that we cannot even use yet, namely trade routes. We haven't unlocked them yet, so you can blast away whatever you got there. Don't you worry about that. Not gonna be missed. So here you see already that 
we can buy those 30 wine, well, almost. He doesn't feature the pottery that we require, but we can also sell off all that resin, theoretically. Practically, I'm going to keep 30. As an experienced player, I know that resin can sometimes be used to fulfill glade events. And that is just something we cannot give away. So, I'm going to put the herbs into the pot here as well, because... Clearly, we are producing these th things now ourselves. Okay, down here we see the value of our goods, and here is the value of Zorg's goods. So we have still a wee bit to go. If you own Amber, you can also buy traits at this uh, fella here, and you can also attack him to gain the goods. That costs you lives, and Queen's Impatience. And the traders won't come that uh, fast again, because they heard that good old pal Zorg didn't come back from his last trip. So... Use that only if you are truly, truly desperate or you're building an elaborate scheme around it. Okay, so we're going to fill up the bill with the cheapest available food. Some foods are cheaper at times. For example here, the pickled goods are, as a matter of fact, cheaper than the raw food here. This is uh, sometimes quite anti-intuitive and that's why I really recommend looking it up. We're going to take these pickled goods press auto so the game fills these up as good as it can trade happened boom we gain some food and as it stands the beavers love pickled goods and the lizards do so as well so they'll receive a slight bonus to their resolve while they're munching on it so traders will now come every couple of minutes he's staying for a minute and then he's uh, going to take a lot while longer than you you know, he normally do because of the cornerstone that we picked. But uh, all in all, that's what traders uh, offer for your colony. And it is very, very good and important to use these. As you most of the time can resolve a lot of your problems just by using traders in, uh, in tandem with the, with the things in your city, basically. Alright, so the weaver is weaving... And the makeshift post is churning out uh, these building material packs hopefully soon. And down goes the storm. This season, though, we're so well off that I'd be even able to just pull out a favoring card and make the lizard so happy to gain reputation. Tell you what, we're even going to do this. Laugh in the face of the storm. Alright, so... Since the situation is that dandy, well, we might be either opening up new glades during the storm, could do that, or we optimize, optimize our current situation. What I'm seeing here is that I really want that forager's camp manned. And here again, we have a proficiency with humans, so we're freeing up the humans, holding down left control, Checking out here at the herbalist camp, we have another person that doesn't need to work here, just like that. And the humans pick the foragers camp, because that kind of efficiency, I personally find it extremely important for me personally, because these are finite resources. It, with finite resources, I really want to get the most out of it, especially with a game that exerts constant pressure on you this way. Now. The harvester's camp here chunks out the plant fibers that we need. There's just the fact that I want to withdraw them and put them up to the herb garden. And here we're going to exclude the herb production and put this exclusively on root production. Yes, this is way less effect efficient than the other way around, but it is also a foolproof way to create food at this place. Due to the fact that humans are pretty good at that, there's a fair chance that we get high income out of that. So, the lizards provided 0 0.04 points of reputation before their happiness went down. With that system, the more population you please, the more happiness, they, uh, the more reputation they crank out. So happy beavers would be providing more reputation per minute than the lizards because of the numbers. That's just simple as it is. And now we see those sparkly fields, they have an extra chance of double yield. So humans can really whip out the, the farming card quite decently well. That's why. Now then. 
Our situation seems quite well. Food doesn't go down dramatically, but we're still feasting on raw food. This is a situation that is uh, highly stable, but we're working on it. So, we can have chance of double yield while under the effect of biscuits versus mushroom production plus one. Yeah, well, we're uh, not exactly picking the mushrooms anywhere in our uh, resource plates. So none of the things that we are currently collecting is yielding mushrooms. So this is one of the situations where I just gamble on the biscuit diet. I have two farms running. If we have biscuit production available, that would be really cool. As it stands, I also happen to know that uh, roots can be ground into, into flour, and flour is the basic ingredient for biscuits, and uh, herbs are also, if I remember correctly, flour and herbs make biscuits. So, you see, we have basically the ingredients for that industry together already. Anyways, I'm digressing. So, here we have another uh, delivery of people. We pick up the dudes that have more humans, as currently we have quite a high demand on these folks. Now, it is time for me to put up a new home here. We're going to set up a hearth up here, and we're going to set up a, another small warehouse here. These two buildings allow us to have a slick infrastructure, where all of the resource collectors can just do their thing quickly. We also will now remove the prioritization and, le and leave the uh, choice of material they provide to the uh, builders here. So, second hearth will allow us to put housing somewhere else. But for the time being, we're uh, going to put... Ah, yeah, well, never mind. That thing is up and running so fast, we can't do this. But I want to open new glades as stands right now we need that we'll also gain extra population due to the uh, trait we picked there we go so I'll put another lizard into the hearth because it's making them happy as we already know and the new shelters will now be built up here in that part of the city because we can uh, upgrade this thing exactly to the same level as this thing and we get the plus two on our resolve another time. This happens for every single play, uh, hearth that you can muster. But the downside is clear. This thing also does require fuel now, henceforth. So there's nothing like a free lunch in life, you know. So it always costs us something. We have now finally that quest resolved. So we can now unemploy this uh, friend here release the materials into the pool again and after that's been done our stone cutters work camp is not busy anymore and that's the point where i just press v and raise it down we get everything back in this game there is no, no such thing as a loss when you uh when you dismantle a building and therefore since i currently don't need stone cutters camp i'll just leave it like that there's plenty of work to go around here in the city, so uh, we're, we don't need to be exactly picky here. Since we're right in, uh, on the verge of opening another dangerous clade, we'll have plenty of work to do. So, the small herbalist's camp also happens to have nothing nearby. I'll keep that for now. Maybe I was a little bit too hasty with my stone cutter as well. We might need to rebuild that, but... Uh, for the sake of the tutorial, I meant to show you that. You can easily resolve that. Okay, new thing? Yeah, of course, clay deposit. <laughs> so. I'll leave it like that, no further commentation needed. Anyways, so we have a new danger event here, and here's the first time that we need to put in rare materials. So, like I said, resin is a problem solver. I knew that in advance. And over here, we can also use building materials for these tasks. Here's the difference. So here we gain hostility increase, 150 points flat while this uh, event is being worked on. That means this event will exert pressure on your resolve while it's being worked on. And uh, if we bury the entrance, we would gain a resolve penalty just for gatherers and woodcutters. But in response, we would gain a bit of 
the uh, crown's uh, reputation. But tell you what, we're going to perform the ritual as currently I am employing so many gatherers that I don't want this. The minus 12 is, uh, would be averaged out onto the entire populace, so it's um, not like you, you have a minus 12 on each faction, but it still is quite a heavy uh, burden, and the rewards here are really good. The ancient tablets are high value goods, you can sell them off for extremely high amounts of money, and there's sometimes also orders that require you to uh, to pay in uh, these packs. Anyways, we're going to take that reward, and this reward is, special, is especially tasty as we gain a lot of building materials, and in addition, our plank production is henceforth more efficient. We gotta build ourselves now that industry that the city deserves, namely the clothier and the carpenter. Let's hope that we're going to be able to draft something useful, but nah, RNG Jesus is not with us today. So we got now two options. The plantation is very interesting, or I'm going to wait until I have opened more glades to choose either between the herbalists or the trappers camp. Currently we need neither of those, as we have no nodes that require them. So, here again, I'm pulling the same card as I did the last couple of times. I don't know what to pick, so I'm picking nothing. This is uh, really, really a strategy that I discovered to resolve a lot of situations and a lot of questions became clear just by waiting. So, in this region of the Hoth, there's not enough people living uh, there's too many people living, we cannot upgrade it further, and here's not enough people living. So houses can be moved, but not for free. It costs you a bit of timber. But in this situation, I gladly pay the timber tax to move these people there, and we just do the same thing here again. Resolve is something you can't bank too much. It just ain't possible to bank up too much resolve, because as soon as you have enough resolve, you just start winning the game. End of the line. So here we got a very nice objective that we can instantaneously fulfill. I'll just take that. The rewards are amazing. I, I wouldn't have even needed to buy the wine, but m the more you know. So here we got now the necessity of a tavern and ale, or have at least 10 humans and fulfill the need of clothing. I have a building that can fulfill that can, that can build clothing, so this one is a no-brainer as well. That's a really good no-brainer, as it really showcases what I'm talking about the whole time. If you just wait long enough, everything will become much clearer. And just without spending too much of a thought, we're down to that one mandatory worker that I keep for building things. Against the Storm is really good at consuming tremendous amounts of workers until it's suddenly not anymore. That's one weird thing, but at some point in the game you will run out of parts to build new buildings and you will run out of um, materials to process and at some point extra population will turn from a blessing into a burden because you will not have enough work to be done for all the people at some point. I never had cities that were able to employ the late game flood of newcomers. I don't know, maybe I'm just too stupid in some point and uh, let me know if you know what I'm doing wrong, but I haven't found it out until ever. Now, at the carpenter's workshop we can now exclude the plank making as well. So that brings me to the point that I'm also unemploying one of these guys here. They're just not needed anymore. At the Carpenter's Workshop, here again, beavers get the extra output chance, which is super good for um, refining industries in general. And here we can produce tools. If I remember correctly, yeah, we'll gain a, uh, a few bars of crystallized dew. And so we're going to make tools only out of planks and with these metal uh, types. Currently, Due to the unlocks that we still have to do, we're not really good at producing metal by ourselves. But if you find any metal and you have a building that can crank out tools, by all means, go for it. Tools are amazing. As with tools, we can just open up caches and uh, get profit. That's just how simple it is. All right, let's see. The herbalist camp 
still doesn't have anything new, so we press V, so we delete it. The trapper's camp ran out of business too, but here's a lot of meat, so we're going to go for it. Here I'm going to go immediately as well for a small warehouse. I'm going to position it here, as this is the center point between these nodes, and later down the road, also for the fertile soil. So here I'm going to set the herb garden down first. I'm placing it down here on the fertile soil on purpose, because there's one thing I hate to uh, tell you, but one farm cannot harvest an entire patch of fertile soil. The two farmers working on one farm without any work speed boosts will be able to plow the entire field, put fertilizer on it, sow the, en uh, sow the entire field, but not harvest the entire field. We would basically need a second farm to put workers on during the clearance season to get the entire job done. What I'm trying to get down to is it's not really terrible if you if you build on a few patches of fertile soil if it is efficient in some way here. You see it. Here we're only getting that far because we have that 33% uh, global production speed bonus. Without it, these fields would be not as plucked clean as they are. So we have our first storm with hostility level one. Not a biggie. We're stomaching it, stomaching it quite well. Let's move the woodcutter camps away. The first thing that you always can do if the storm gets too hot for you, you can move away woodcutters, as woodcutters are your main source of hostility. Or not the main uh, source, but one of the sources that can be easily cancelled out. Let's put it down like that, I should rather. So, we got here a lot of uh, herb gardens running, and I do this on purpose as I feel like it will be a pretty nice idea to have tons of things to trade with once the next trader hits town. Alright, so that warehouse will now help everybody here to transport their goods here, and my, by rainpunk magic these goods will also be available in the main warehouse. Why? I just don't know. It is what it is. Take it and like it. I do. Yours sincerely. Well, well, so we're going to go and cut our glade way open here as there's a really nice convergence of two danger glades and once and we just need to fulfill our tasks. As you see here, we have a bit of population left over. That is really good because that means we can put the Clothia in business. Tell you what, since our industry is so darn efficient, we're even going to put these into full on business, but I'm going to put a limit of 100 on these coats as I don't want to drain my entire fabric pool into the uh, production of clothes. This would be by no means a smart choice because we don't need them that badly and these numbers. All right, calming the forest. Every time we do an empathy uh, solution, we gain hostility reduction versus farsight. Whenever we discover a small glade, the work time on the events goes down for three minutes. This is more of a late game or higher difficulty trait when dangerous glades will become more, much more harder to clear because of reasons that I don't want to spoil it right now. So we're taking Calming the Forest. Hostility reducers are always a no-brainer. They are so good and there's literally no downside to reducing the forest's hostility. It's just like that. All right, so we're picking up that caravan. So we get a couple of extra workers. And as you see there, this place is now looking upgraded too. We have quite a happy city. So with that thing, we can gain another point of reputation. I won't do that right now because I cannot really select any blueprint here already anyways. I don't want to bother myself with a blueprint that I have no access to it either. So we're just going to wait on that. This is especially nice because the Queen's Impatience is in fact working for us. Every point of impatience lowers the forest's hostility. So, since you only lose the game when the bar is full, 
we might as well stall that a wee bit, eh? So, what's left to do is expand our road network, which just doesn't uh, happen too well because I did move away all the woodcutters. Oh well. Here we go. That one camp is getting the job done quite nicely too. I'm very, very sure about that. And just like that, we have our first uh, industries that will crank out reputation like crazy. We got industry that produces tools. That means we can produce, we can open up caches as we want to, at least as long as we have a metal intake, that is. We have a clothing production, which means that the clothing, as soon as the beavers and I think the humans will put it on, will make these fellas also very, very happy. And yeah, this is uh, this is exactly the kind of things that you need to pull through the game. So we got this already resolved. This is uh, pretty much resolved. This is resolved. Here we just need to wait until we either get an event for pottery or well, maybe Sahilda will bring some. Maybe we even find a cache that we can't smash open. Say, is there pottery? Nah, there's just wine, but there wasn't enough wine, so damn, they're really, they're really dunking me in the, into that wine. Anyway, so here we find our first ruins. Hell yeah. <clears throat> we also have found our first root um, deposit, and I gotta say, that forager's camp pays off right from the get-go. So here we get another dangerous event, of course, the Rain Spur Totem. So as it stands here, we can either take it as a hostility decreasing decoration or we just burn it down. In that situation, I personally vouch for the hostility reducing decoration as the resin available for that just comes from the trees. We don't need to work hard for that at all. So totally taking that. Now, as our food situation currently is quite stable, I'm going to be sending these guys all to the Citadel simply because I really don't want that many more workers to feed. This is, in my personal opinion, a very nasty noob trap to to provoke you to, to gather way too much uh, population in a too short amount of time. We are still in a food crisis situation. This is not good. We are just scraping by. We're uh, mostly uh, coming along so nicely because we got that insane amount of agriculture running for us. So down here we got the bakery. We can either salvage it for a bit of pie ugh, and a bit of clay or we build it, rebuild it up for ourselves. I say we rebuild it up as we can gain the pottery that we require and it also brings us to the point where I just will require a industry that can mill me flour. We got the roots, we got all we need, we can then get that bakery going and that is good news. All right. So you really feel, by the way, the uh, lowered amount of uh, trader occurrence due to the deserted caravans. So that is uh, really putting up some pressure on our shoulders. But whatever. I just came up with an idea that I personally like here. So instead of uh, now stalling any further, I mean, the trapper's camp surely looks nice and all, we're going to pick up that plantation. We found so far on every single dangerous clade, another fertile soil spot. We can now safely say that this place is really well fit for that task. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the city more or less a um, agricultural city. And maybe I'll be even ripping out one of these herb gardens and transform it into another plantation. We'll see about that. The advantage of the plantation is that it produces food for us on a much better ratio. And that is why I think it is worth it. Sometimes you just have to take a suboptimal solution for your problem. But if it is a suboptimal solution, but still a solution, I think it is worth going for it as you are playing on time here. All right, so I'll be ending this episode here. 
we will be most likely able to win in the next episode, or at least I hope so. And I hope you enjoyed it. I mean, I, I do my best to showcase how to win games here without us uh, breaking too much of a sweat. And uh, comments go down below. Thumbs up would be appreciated. Consider subscribing. And of course, check out the description box. Lots of links to go around. There's Discord. There's Twitch. Streaming every Sunday evening in the Middle European time zone. And of course, check out Patreon, Pi Paypal, or buy me a coffee. With a big, big thanks to all the supporters. And a big, big thanks especially to you watching this darned long episode up until the very end. I hope you enjoyed. See you there. Bye-bye.